Master Ken here. Thought I would drop in on you with another self-defense lesson. Assuming most of you are still in quarantine, you've probably watched all of the Netflix and all of the YouTubes and everything. I was thinking about making my lesson today about Earth Day. In fact, I went out in back of the dojo and I wanted to be able to gaze upon the Earth. We have beautiful horizons out here in New Mexico. So I cut down about half a dozen trees out back of my dojo, and now I have a great view of the Earth. But in the spirit of Earth Day, I thought I would come up with some self-defense techniques that are based in the elemental aspect of the Earth. You know, we have the four elements, Earth, wind, fire, and water. First one, of course, I mentioned is Earth. Say you have some, I went to uh, White Sands and got some very fine sand. They have signs up telling you not to take any, but they don't really check you for it. I mean, just just ignore the sign. Uh, I did. I just put some in my pockets and uh, walked out with it. But if you have some very fine sand, you may want to snort it if it looks like this. But you shouldn't do that because it's not very good for self-defense. Let's say the bob is coming up to me in a threatening manner, okay? Just point my sand right in the eyes. Another thing you can do is carry a sock full of it. Let's call it a sock of sand. That's where the term actually comes from. You're gonna sock somebody in the mouth with an actual sock. Fill that with sand and then as soon as somebody's giving you grief, sock them with the sand sock. Because trees grow out of the earth, you could also use a stick. But we've covered a lot of that, so I'm trying to do some new things. But just remember that giving your opponent some hard wood is a good way to get them to leave you alone. Take some wood and just whack them. Just whack them with your wood. Next up would be wind. If you have gingivitis or any other disorders in the mouthful area, if you have bad dental hygiene, you can absolutely turn your wind into a weapon. Getting close to your opponent and just... It's good to know where you're most rotted inside. Um, if your teeth are bad, shoot it through your teeth. If you uh, have bad hygiene further down in your throat and lungs, if you say you're a big smoker or you just eat a lot of cheese, bring that up from your diaphragm. Just... If you have asthma or you have really, really good hygiene, you don't have to do those things. Carry a can of compressed air. Sometimes I just carry that around on my belt and if somebody comes up that I don't want to talk to and they're like, hey, how you doing, Master Ken? Just... I'm not a lawyer, but I don't believe that that is technically assault. If someone comes up to you and gives you grief and you're just like and then they go get a cop, you can just say, officer, I just noticed they had a lot of dust on their face. I wasn't trying to fight them, I just that takes care of wind. Water. Water is kind of an obvious one. You know, always want to carry your water with you, staying hydrated. Water you can use in or out of a container. That's one of the best things about it, you know. Water is dangerous in the container. If someone's giving me grief, I can I can tuck, tuck my cap right between my knuckles. Striking, striking, striking. Use the bottom of it like a handle and just right across the bridge of the nose right up to the temple. I can push against the throat and just choke him. This would be an ironic way to choke on water because he's unable to drink it. You know, that's where that saying comes from. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. The guy who wrote that poem was being choked with a water bottle. So he choked to death ironically, but he wrote that poem. He had a free hand. He had one hand up here trying to push the guy away. And then with his other hand, he wrote that poem. A lot of people don't know that. And then of course, obviously, you can splash it in his eyes, on his face. You can try to shove it down his mouth and pour it right. Make sure you, if you do that, if you're gonna do that, make sure to shove it all the way past. You don't want it to go into his belly, you want it to go into his lungs. So just make sure that you shove the bottle far enough that you can squeeze the water into his lungs and then hold his mouth so that he can't spit it back up. If you wanna go old school, just Okay, just pour that all over the cloth. This technique is actually technically called waterboarding. Although you don't, they don't have to be tied to a board. That's just if you have the time and the resources like rope and a, and a plank of some sort. You can just hold a wet cloth over somebody's face and ideally you just, you just pour the water over that. This is easier to do with a friend. 
So if you're being attacked and a friend of yours is free, tell the person attacking you, hold on one second, and call up your friend and say, hey, are you, uh, hey buddy, are you free to waterboard somebody with me today? Hopefully they say yes. We have the fire option. A couple of things you can do with fire. You can use that on the weapon itself, right? I can heat up the knife. It's just like using a, a hot knife on butter. But in this case, the butter is your opponent. So it's like you're fighting a six foot tall stick of butter. So you heat up your blade and then you'll notice that when you stab them, it will slide into the skin much, much easier because the blade is hot. Another advantage is that if you make the blade hot enough, it will cauterize the wound. He actually will not bleed out as quickly. So if you want to stab somebody, but you don't want them to bleed to death really quickly, say you, for some reason, you want to stab them many, many times. Maybe you're trying to set a world record for the most times stabbing an opponent, but you're worried that he will die before you reach the record. I don't know what the record is. It's probably very high, but say it's 900 times. You're going to try to stab somebody 900 times. They're probably going to be bleeding out by the time you hit low triple digits. You stab somebody 99, 100 times. They're probably going to be bleeding to death. But if you don't want them to bleed to death, heat up your blade first. There we go. And then you'll notice that every stab, the wound will close up because the blade is hot. That's a little bit more advanced, higher level for those of you who are into stabbing. Uh, another thing you can do is just sort of pull somebody down close and then just burn them directly with the lighter. You have to have a good hold of them though. You can't, they're gonna, and they're gonna flail around. Believe you me, you start burning somebody right to their face, they're gonna flail. So you're gonna have to get really close and then as soon as it's, as soon as it's lit, you're gonna have to hold them down and they're gonna go, oh, 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 oh. Okay, so you gotta have a good grip on them. That's some basic Earth Day self-defense, teaching you how to defend yourself with the elements. And just make sure to uh, continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and remember, always restomp that groin. Thanks for watching our video. Remember, you can order your own personalized video message from me, Master Ken, by going to Cameo. So whether it's a happy birthday, or you want me to tell you, or your instructor, why your martial art is total bullshit, go to Cameo and order your video message today. And remember, always restomp that groin.